Welcome back, Stasis 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And today's knife is the Summit Knife Company Half Dome. This is a, a, a new company uh, that, that I got to meet at Blade Show this past year. And uh, the, the, the husband and wife of the company were so very nice. Talked to them for a long time. And um, the Half Dome is their, their first design. And it intrigued me for, for a few reasons. And uh, especially after talking to them and how nice they were, I just I knew I, I was going to have to pick up one of these and check it out for myself. Um, the Half Dome comes in at $175 for the micarta versions. And they also have an all titanium scale version for $225. Uh, this is a design collaboration with, I'm probably going to butcher this, Tommaso Rumici, I think it is. Um, and these were produced for them in Italy at, at Fox and Ives. Um, the different variations you have, this one with the green canvas micarta. They have another one in the frame lock and you also have a black linen micarta version. And then, like I said, an all tie. And the difference between this one and the all tie, besides the, the, the show scale, is the all tie one has blue anodized hardware. And this blue anodized titanium hardware. And this hardware is titanium, as far as I can see, because none of it's magnetized. So, um,. And uh, on the all tie one, besides the blue anodized hardware, you also get a blue mill titanium pocket clip. And this one is a stainless wire deep carry pocket clip. Uh, let's get some quick dimensions out of the way. This is a pretty small knife because uh, this knife was designed, as they told me, that this was uh, designed as a backpacking knife. Um, and while we're on that, the the name the half dome is um a granite dome that's in your ne yosemite national park and they also have the uh coordinates right there i guess like what is your longitude and latitude i guess i don't know <laughs> but the coordinates of the half dome right there on the blade pretty cool little little detail and there's the fox knives logo right there <clears throat> Specs, you have a six inch overall, so like I said, a nice compact little lightweight uh, EDC. You have a 2.5 inch blade length, so it's gonna be legal in a lot of areas. You have a three inch grip area. You have a nice slim 0.41 thickness in the scales. Uh, the width in the closed position that's gonna take up in your pocket is 1.39, so not bad at all. Um, uh, that's the width and your blade stock thickness is a pretty hefty 0.137 and um, the thin the behind the edge thickness averages around 19 thousandths on mine with a 22 22 degrees per side edge bevel <clears throat> I really really wanted to be excited about this cut but I'm just gonna let you know right now it, it let me down in a, in a bunch of ways, but let's kind of get into that so you can see why. First, talk about some things that I liked about the knife, like the unique, unique design, the unique handle look, and that unique blade. You know, I haven't really seen much that looks exactly like this. Um, and like I said, that under three inch blade length, you know, it's kind of three inch, sub three inch, my, my sweet spot, and it's legal in a lot of areas. That's, that's a great thing as well. Um, <laughs> I absolutely love my Carta, and you don't see a whole lot of production knives with it on there. And when I saw this, my Carta show size scale, just love the character and the unique look it, it gives and the nice tactility it gives with traction whenever your hands are sweaty. Um, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the thin and lightweight nature of the knife. Let's, let's get a quick weight on this guy. Cause this, it's a featherweight. I said, if you're going to be clip, clipping it to your backpack, you're probably worrying about every little ounce. 
2.44 ounces, so I think that would do the trick. Um, like the fact that they use all tie hardware and um, that you get a uh, wire pocket clip. I love the wire pocket clips because they don't have any sharp edges on there that, that'll scratch up stuff. I know a lot of my pocket clips in, tend to rip holes in my steering wheels because they, whenever I get out, it gets catches the bottom. It might just be a problem I have. Um, I like the satin finish they have on the blade. It's pretty nice and attractive. The jimping is, I'd say, light traction. They have jimping up on the blade right here, and they have it on the frame as well to kind of try to keep you from sliding up, being that you don't have a guard. Um, <clears throat> this this pie clip, I don't know if I said it, is stainless. Uh, the other all tie version is titanium, and I think the all tie team the the pie clip on the all tie one I think it's the same pie clip on the 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 Suru the newer version Surus from Fox Knives. Um, also, being it's a, a backpack knife, it's nice that it doesn't have a, a, a stabby tip. You know, it doesn't really have a, a tip as you can see. It's kind of got like that uh, sheep's footish blade. That's, you know, it's designed for that purpose. So they did a good job on, on executing that. Um, let's see. <clears throat> like the fact that they used Bowler M390. It's a nice premium blade steel. Um, also, there's the, the designer's uh, name right there in Italy. There's the Fox logo. My dog's probably about to freak out. Um, and that that's about to the extent of my likes so far so let's let's get some uh quick size comparisons so you can kind of get an idea of how small this guy is i think the the closest reference in size overall in every dimension is the crkt pilar they're just i think they're about identical in length and you know very close in width and they you know kind of resemble each other a little bit and then also the Best Tech engine. Best Tech engine is a little bit shorter, as you can see. And two more quick comparisons. Got the Spyderco Warney Dragonfly 2. See, you got about the same grip area in the handles. And then the Quiet Carry IQ. Let's see. IQ is a good bit bigger than that, but a lot slimmer. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about all the things that kinda, kinda made this a knife that I can't recommend, and I, I, I hopefully, being it's their first design, they can kinda fix some of these things that you know people stated. And the first. First thing I noticed right whenever I took it out of the box is that opening hole is is nice and sharp. They don't they don't really have a chamfer going around those edges. You know, it's something I can fix, but you know, out of box, you know, it's not that ideal. Whenever I go to open it, especially with my fingers, it it is it, not that comfortable. So it, one good thing is though I can spotty flick it pretty easy, and that's that's the main means of uh, opening for me. Uh, speaking of the opening, the action's not that great. It's not terrible. It's on Foster Bronze washers, but the action is just not not that smooth. Uh, it kind of feels like um, overly tight lock bar pressure, maybe. <clears throat> the next thing is that smile and that edge termination. They just barely missed the sharpening choil. They, they need to come out about another eighth of an inch and you wouldn't have that smile on there. Um, we'll go back to, let's see, the uh, the lock area. As you can see, that lock is, the lock bar is flush with the show, show side scale, and they put that jumping for traction. Now, I can, I can do like this and bury my finger, my thumb in there to disengage it, but it, after doing that for a while, it's not that comfortable and 
being that I fidget often with my knives, I found the, the, the most comfortable way is to use that fat of my thumb, but that too gets uncomfortable whenever you're, you're pushing down on that jimping after a while. So it's not, not the funnest one to disengage for me. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> the next thing I noticed whenever I started doing my, my, cut, my cutting test uh, phase of my review cycle, I got to the boxes and, you know, it was okay cutting through some light duty boxes and stuff, but whenever I was testing ergos, doing my wood shaving and, you know, my little, I guess you'd call them feather sticks, whatever you want to call them, just testing out the ergos, I noticed that I, I could not do it because it was painful. That clip right there, and every time I can't, see, anytime I see a clip high up like down the knife, uh, I'm, I'm already worried because most of the time when, when I don't see that clip in the middle, it's usually hot, hot spot city for me. But whenever I bear down to do that wood shaving, it was, it's pretty darn uncomfortable because the top of that clip just, just pushes down to the, to the palm of my hand, making it rather uncomfortable to push in. So that's another pretty bad thing for me. Um, I don't know. It might be better with that mill titanium pie clip. I know I, I saw uh, on Best Damn EDC's channel that he swapped it for one of the uh, milled titanium aftermarket clips uh, that you can buy from like Rips Garage Tech, whatever. And he said it, it 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 made all the difference for him. So you know maybe I'll do that. I don't know if I want to spend any more money on this knife. Um, and something that that I noticed. Uh, when I, right before I took it apart, I was just kind of just checking, you know, lock up and up and down. I noticed it had a little bit of up and down, uh, like kind of blade slip. I, I'm not worried about it closing. I mean, it's, it's locked up, but you know, it's never something you want to see in a knife. And maybe that's why they got the extra lock bar tension to try to make sure it doesn't slip out of place. And I was wondering, you know, what might be causing that. So I took it apart because, like I said, the action was not good at all, and it was making a screeching noise every time I opened and closed it because the detent ball had absolutely no lubrication on it, and it was, like, screeching. So I cleaned it all up, and I put some lube on the detent ball and the washers and stuff like that. And when I was going to put it, put it back together, I don't know if I'll be able to show you this, but I think I found why at least mine, I don't know if they're all, all like this, but at least why mine has a lock slip is, I don't know if you can see that because it's got a little uh, oil on there, but the blade tang has been carbonized. See how it's rough? Usually a blade tang, let's see, show this one maybe. Yeah, see how the blade tang on this one is, is like smooth, like a satin finish on that? And how this one looks like there's little rocks embedded or diamonds embedded in there. That's that's carbonization. That's uh, tungsten carbide. Why they did that, I have no idea. Um, you know, that's usually something you see on lock bar, titanium lock bars, to keep them from wearing out quicker because the tungsten carbide is a lot harder than the steel. And, I mean, I've done that before because I had up and down lock rock because my, I, I did some stupid stuff with my knife and it was rocking because it was going back and forth to the stop pin. So I don't know if they were trying to fix something or they do that to all their knives, but I really think that's what's causing my blade slip. That's not cool, especially for a $175 knife. Um, not, not, the, not something you really wanna see. But all that stuff, you know, I could fix a lot of the things, not something I want to do, but I, I can, I can fix everything that I've talked about. But this next thing I, I really can't fix and I'm hoping it gets better, you know, more and more I use it. But this thing, especially being an M390, I don't know if Fox, you know, is known for doing a good job on the heat treat or not, but, my variation of this knife in M390 did not hold a good edge. I mean, I didn't do anything that I don't, all, the same, pretty much the same test I do with every knife that comes across my channel. And it did terrible. 
<clears throat> now it's still wearing a factory edge on here. Let me see if I can show you this. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but see right here to here, right here, <laughs> where the light is reflecting. You see where the light's reflecting, it stops right here and then you don't see it. Completely blunted, absolutely blunted. It, the edge rolled, you can feel the burr on this side of the knife. And I don't know if that was from doing cutting the zip ties or, uh, I mean, that would be the only thing that I could think of, but <laughs> I've never had an M390 blade roll uh, on the zip ties. I haven't. I didn't, I didn't torque on it. I didn't pop them up like that. I basically pushed down and, and cut them straight down. So that's odd. Um, <laughs> and now with all those said, let me know. Like I said, this is just one version of this knife. I'm hoping that I just got a bad one. If you have this knife, let me do it down in the comments. Hey, if any of these things I've talked about, you've had those problems and let me know how the edge on yours held up. And also I'd really like to know if, if they all came with uh, the blade tang right there, carbonized. Um, that's just something, I don't know. I don't, uh, you don't see, I've seen it on, on a few other knives in the past, but you definitely don't see it often. And, uh, you know, with all those, all those complaints and, and, you know, things that I found, that's, like I said, that's the reasons I can't, I can't recommend this knife. And I hate doing these type of videos. I, I, I don't like doing that, but I'm gonna keep it real. You know, that'll probably mean that <clears throat> once again, I'll have to take a bath on this knife because, you know, nobody's gonna wanna buy that for, you know, anything reasonable because of all those problems. But uh, I, I don't know what Fox's return policy is. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll try to to check check out their warranty policy. I don't know. I'm kind of kind of over it with this knife. But I would like to know with people who own this knife how the edge held up on yours, just so I can have an idea. Maybe maybe I got a lemon. You know that happens. I don't have the best luck in the world. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Uh, <clears throat> if you <clears throat> if you like this design, let me know what you like about it. Let me know if there's anything on here that you didn't like that maybe I didn't talk about. And uh, let me know, besides the, the, uh, the terrible edge holding on my particular one, let me know if, if the nitpicks and complaints that I talked about are deal breakers for you. Um, they're not always deal breakers for me as long as I can fix them. Not something I always want to do or will do, but if I like the design, you know, uh, I'll do whatever I have to do to make it perfect for me. So there you go. Hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. Let's have a conversation down below and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.